got coming for us and this time and period is our area. And let's delight and welcome and our guest speaker, Dr. Raymond Armstrong. Yeah, I, I was talking to Fred, I just, you know, my mother did some work with genealogy, and you might, you might know that. I told Fred that I'd be very interested in, uh, in, in tracing my, my lineage and learning more about my, my family history. And, uh, but I knew it was expensive and very detailed, but he says, no problem, he says, just register as Republican, register and, 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 uh, and qualify for mayor. <laughs> You'll find it more than you ever would have known. So. <laughs> but the other thing, my, my mother, from the time when we were very small children, we visited graveyards and courthouses. We had copies of wills, and, and uh, Mama had pages and pages and pages of information on their lineage. And we didn't take it real seriously. It was very young children. My brother Ralph and I were on the floor playing one time, and Mama comes in with some papers. And, she was very serious and she says that children I have traced our lineage back to Jesus Christ. And we started looking at it. And very seriously she looked at us and she said, uh, on his mother's side. <laughs> 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 and she was real serious. Mom didn't go any further. And she was real serious about this. Anyway, Fred wanted me to talk some about uh, what some people consider certainly one of the most progressive mayors the city of New Orleans ever had. Uh, and some might consider him as one of the greatest mayors that New Orleans ever had, and that was uh, uh, Andrew Forsyth. And, uh, Andrew Forsyth was born in, in uh, Catahoula Parish. And you know, in, in this article, they don't have the date that he was born. He, he, he died in, uh, uh, in, in 1914. Uh, while he was mayor of the road. He was, was graduated from LSU, I'm sorry, he was out of LSU, and he got a game tonight. <laughs> he was, was a graduate of Tulane Medical School in uh, 1886, uh, finished his valedictorian of, uh, of uh, Tulane, and uh, uh, married a girl named Beulah and moved uh, here to Monroe. He practiced. Uh, until uh, a group of people requested that he run for mayor. Uh, he ran for mayor, ran against an incumbent on a, a, a platform of trying to make Monroe be what Monroe could be. Uh, and he won. Uh, and, uh, in 1898, he served as mayor from 1898 until uh, 1914. And then, uh, Office. He made some remarkable changes. Of course, Forsyth Park was uh, named after him, but uh, he took advantage of the change in Louisiana Charter uh, and uh, that, that allowed cities to issue bonds. And uh, he issued city bonds. In fact, he was uh, the, the first in the state uh, to take advantage of the, uh, uh, of the division, and, uh, and he borrowed money. And with that money, uh, I have to read you the, the, the list of things that he's, he's, he's doing. Very, very impressive. Uh, let's see, with the monies to be raised with the bond sales, $40,000 will be used for paving the our streets, $30,000 for a sewer system, $5,000 for a charity hospital, uh, $20,000 for a city high school, and $60,000 for a light and water plants. But the electricity and water at that time was privately owned. It was not efficient. It was not uh, reliable or like good. So he took it over to the city and uh, 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 paid for it, and it uh, never the really was going to change. Um, let's see. For education, Forsyth is pledged to assist the city's educators in getting a modern and impressive high school building. Perhaps to answer Washtenaw Parish, I remember she raised a uh, parish high school building within the city limits. I guess I'll get to her office. But he, he, he did that. 
Uh, and then he was uh, re-elected in 1902 with a very sizable majority because of a, a lot of progressive ideas that he had. He, he started our, our public transit system and, uh, and it raised money. It was a six-mile six uh, transit system that ended up at uh, an area that he bought uh, for the city, a 120-acre uh, park, which is, is Forsyth Park. Uh, and in that, uh, and, and there was so much work here, but, but he did uh, some things. He, with the city council approval, uh, he was going to take advantage of the opportunities to, uh, to drill uh, to get uh, natural gas or oil uh, here in the city. Uh, he, he went down about 12, 1,500 feet, but did not get. Uh, did not get natural gas, at least they got a very small amount of it, not a high quality of it. But they got a lot of salt water. And uh, so they, uh, if you can make lemonade out of a lemon, uh, he did that. And uh, they went over before the levee system was built and between what now is the levee and the Washtenaw River, uh, he built a natatorium, a salt water natatorium. And he was in that auditorium with uh, the, uh, the, the gas that was, uh, that was covered and had a, uh, a very popular uh, family uh, uh, retreat for about 25 years until in about 1932 when, when we had the flooding and the, the, uh, the levee system was built, uh, it closed. But they, they heated it, uh, very, very popular. They, they brought people in from three different states. Uh, to come to the road for this. They had uh, gas lights uh, that were there from the, uh, uh, from the, the natural gas that they brought up. In fact, the gas was popular. They, they tunneled uh, gas lines under the road and went over to the houses on the riverside. And, and, and all of those houses, uh, many of those houses, had, had gas lights that were uh, supplied from the gas. He, they built another uh, pool, this one a, a, a hotter pool, because the salt water had a high sulfur content and they used that to uh, treat uh, diseases uh, that were you know, popularly treated at that time with uh, the heat in the water, salt water. And uh, so he had two, two pools there. Uh, you know, I, I've crossed the the levee many a times we've seen those two ponds over there between the, the levee uh, and between the, uh, the river and I never realized that those were the remnants of the, uh, the two auditoriums that I uh, course I built. So uh, he was extremely progressive and uh, it brought Monroe into the 21st uh, the 20th century. So uh, uh, he had a $10,000 a year job in 1898 and gave that job up for a $600 a year job uh, as mayor. Uh, very commendable that he felt dedicated to uh, the city of Monroe enough to, uh, to do this. And was, it was a clearly outstanding individual uh, as well as an outstanding mayor. So, in any case, uh, uh, Fred asked me to progress from, from this into, uh, uh, anybody have any questions uh, right now at this point?